Hi everyone, in this quick tip tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use the vector crop tool in Designer to easily isolate PNG elements on a transparent background. This is a quick alternative to using one of the selection tools in the Pixel Persona. Now I'm using the iPad version of the app. For those of you on the desktop version, it works exactly the same way so you can easily follow along. I've created a mock-up for my next class and I want to add a piece of tape to the top of my label here. Now I could create one with some of the shape tools and some textures. What I've done instead is downloaded this file of high resolution scans of tape from texturelabs.org. If you haven't checked out Texture Labs yet, it's a great resource for all sorts of textures and elements like these that you can use in personal and commercial work. I've linked it below. I highly recommend checking it out and supporting his work. So this is a single file with several pieces of tape on a transparent background. I want to isolate this one in particular to use in my mock-up. Now, again, I could go to my pixel persona and use one of my selection tools, but I'm going to do it right here in the designer persona using the vector crop tool. I've moved the tape file into my artboard and turned off the background so you can easily see what I'm doing. I'm going to select that layer and go to my vector crop tool. If you ever can't find a tool here in Designer, just tap the question mark at the bottom and these labels will pop up. So when you tap on the vector crop tool, you're going to get a bounding box similar to the move tool. The difference being you have these little spots here at the top, bottom, sides, and diagonals that are going to allow you to change the size of the box. Now, there are ways of using modifier keys to lock the aspect ratio, but in this case, what I want to do is just isolate this piece of tape. So what I'm going to do is grab this little handle at the bottom and drag up. I'll make sure I'm on this one at the top and drag down, and I'm going to do the same thing from the side. You want to make sure that you're grabbing those boxes there. If you grab the thinner part, you're actually going to move the entire shape. So what this has done is created a non-destructive mask that's masking away all of the other pieces of tape. If I turn that mask off, they're still there. So what I want to do is turn my background back on. I'm going to turn the mask back on and I just want to make sure before I do anything else that this is the piece of tape that I want to use. So I can grab my move tool and size this down. And because that mask is in place, I'm only manipulating this piece of tape, but everything else is still there. So I like how that looks. I want to use this one. Now I could save this file. The problem is I have a lot of textures already in place, which are going to make for a larger file. So I want to save space wherever I can by not saving things I don't need. If I were to save this right now, because this mask is in place, it's going to save all of the information for every piece of tape, not just this one. So what I want to do is rasterize this layer and delete the rest while maintaining my crop around this one. With that layer selected, I'm going to go to the second icon here in the layers panel and choose rasterize and trim. And you can see the bounding box shrunk a little bit so that it's around the tape itself. And that's because it was a transparent background. So it moved as close as it could to the tape. If I were to choose the vector crop tool now and drag out these boxes, it's forming another mask because I'm dragging now, but you can see that the tape is no longer there. I'm just going to two finger tap and bring that back. Now I can grab my move tool. I can move this around. I can size it up and down and add FX to it. But when I save this overall file, I'm not saving information I don't need. So the vector crop tool is really handy when it comes to cropping vector objects or groups of vectors as well as images. But as you saw from this tutorial, you can also use it as a quick way to isolate PNG elements that are spaced out on a transparent background. If you have any questions about how the vector crop tool works or how to use it in your own work, let me know in the comments below. Or if you have a request for a tutorial on a particular tool, let me know that as well. If you've enjoyed my teaching style, check out my full length classes either on Skillshare or on my own class site, The Creator Collage. You'll find links below. And if you want to learn more about Affinity Designer or the other two apps in the suite, consider checking out my other tutorials on YouTube, like these two next. Thanks for watching.